Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome to Dee's Yard. And today I want to share with you how I went from this to this to this to this. One of the most rewarding things about gardening, in my opinion, is propagating new plants from a healthy parent plant. Today I'm going to take some cuttings from my winter gem boxwood to grow my own. I did the exact same method I'm going to show you two years ago and had a 100% success rate and now they are growing beautifully to create a hedge around my water garden. The main reason I chose to propagate my own boxwood was for the cost. I needed 40 plants to complete my desired hedge and not only would that be difficult to find that many available, but it was going to be very pricey. Also, with needing so many boxwood, the thought of boxwood blight comes to mind and the probability is much higher when purchasing multiple plants. So my thought was to purchase one healthy parent plant from a trusted local nursery and then create the boxwood myself to reduce the risk of introducing the fungal disease on my property. Also, it's very fun and rewarding to grow your own plants and watch them mature. Keep in mind there are so many different ways to propagate and this is just what works for me with boxwood cuttings. I'll be sure to link all the products I'm using today down below. I always start by preparing my growing medium and I personally like to use a peat moss and perlite mix. You could also use horticultural sand and I've even seen others just use potting soil but I like to ensure that I have a sterile growing medium. I'm just mixing 50% of the peat moss and 50% of the perlite. At this point, you can either pre-wet the mixture prior to placing it into its container, or you can pre-fill your containers with a dry mix and then wet the mixture. But honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm just opting to pre-wet. When it comes to containers, you can use Tupperware, nursery pots, solo cups, whatever you have on hand. I prefer to use these clear seedling trays that I use to start my vegetable seeds in because I like to observe the root growth. Also because it comes with this adjustable humidity dome that makes it very handy for the process. And now I'm just going to fill my container with the growing medium. Now that I have everything ready to go, it's time to take some cuttings. For home gardeners, there are three primary types of cuttings, softwood, semi-hardwood, and hardwood, depending on the growth stage of the plant. I like to take semi-hardwood cuttings because they generally root easily and because they don't require a lot of special knowledge. I found the best time to do this is between June and September with mid-July really being the sweet spot. When taking cuttings, I always make sure that I disinfect my Corona snips first and that I'm taking cuttings from a healthy, disease and pest-free parent plant. What we are looking for is in between the soft and new, but not quite old enough to be hard and woody. This is where the new growth has started to harden and turn a brown or darker color. Cut the stem just below a leaf node or where a set of leaves are. Then I'm going to remove some of the soft new growth at the top for the ideal length of three to four inches. To prepare the cuttings, you'll want to strip the bottom foliage from the lower half of the stem, but leave some foliage at the top. Removing the bottom foliage should create an open wound. I then dip my cuttings in a rooting hormone or compound because it aids in root formation. You don't have to use one, but I prefer to, and I'm just using a powdered form. There is also gel and liquid forms as well. Next, I'm just sticking the cutting into the growing medium that was prepared earlier. You can also use a pencil or pen to create a hole if desired and just firm it in. Now, I don't wanna put my cuttings all the way down to the bottom. I only stick it halfway to reduce the risk of rotting. 
Typically water tends to settle or pool to the bottom and I don't want it to sit in excess water. Now that we have all our cutting stuck, we just need to prepare their home for the next couple months. The trays make it super easy because all I need to do is place the lid on with the dome vent closed. If you are using a different container, you're going to want to use a clear Ziploc bag or a clear plastic tote to cover the cuttings to create a humidity dome. And now I just need to place them on my back porch or in an area that receives bright but indirect sunlight. We want to shield them from the direct sun to prevent heat stress and scorching, but also avoid putting them in the deep shade, which may cause the cuttings to rot. Having to water the growing medium should be infrequent as long as they are kept inside their humidity dome. You want it to be moist but not soggy. Having too much moisture and the cuttings will rot. Opening up the humidity dome to allow some airflow will help with that. On the flip side, we don't want the cuttings to dry out. I like to mist them once daily or every other day. In about three to four weeks, you can start looking for roots or gently tug on the stems for slight resistance. Last time, mine took about one month to start rooting, and then I was able to pot them up after six to eight weeks after taking the cuttings. So because I took these cuttings in mid-July, I should be able to start potting them up around early September. I use a pine bark soil conditioner and recycled nursery containers to pot up the rooted cuttings and slowly introduce them to the sun over a few weeks. Remember, they were sitting in lightly shaded conditions. I also fertilize them with a slow release such as Osmoco at the time of potting. Even though they are hardy in my zone, for their first winter, I wanted to provide some extra protection, so I used a mini portable greenhouse to overwinter them. This worked well, and then in the early spring, I fertilized them again with Osmoco. Over the summer, I just kept the boxwood watered, and then in the fall, they were ready to plant. I'll link all the associated videos below, including the planting process, but they were spaced 24 inches apart, and drip irrigation was also installed for easy watering. And here's how the boxwood are doing today, almost two years after taking the initial cuttings. I think they are growing beautifully and I cannot wait to watch them fill in. I hope this video was helpful and even inspired you to create your own plants. It truly is rewarding. Thank y'all so much for watching and I will catch y'all on the next one. Bye guys.